Once again, it's on. What's up, world? It's your boy, Vic XL, and this is the Ryan Dirty Radio Show, the Ryan Dirty Podcast. Got to start the show off by saying one time for WRFG 89.3 FM, our FM radio home. Check us out every Tuesday and Thursday night, 3 a.m. Also got to say one time for Beat Break Radio, our internet radio home. Also check out our replays there on Monday nights from 7 to 8. All right. Again, Ryan Dirty Show, your boy Vic XL, about to get into it. You know we bridge the gap between hip-hop and everyday life, giving you what's next, but we're giving it to you now. We're always keeping our hands and our fingers on the pulse of what's going on, all right? All right, so today is no different than any other day. I got a I got an awesome guest to bring on the line, but before I do, I got to let y'all know what's going on. I got to say one time for Dr. Juice Cleanse. That's right, Dr. Juice Cleanse is the official sponsor of the Riding Dirty Show and Dr. Juice Cleanse, an all natural cleanser that does all kind of amazing and great things for your body, like slow down the aging process, like help eliminate stress, like help provide balanced pH systems. Like, you know what? My favorite thing Dr. Juice Cleanse does is Dr. Juice Cleanse. Dr. Juice Cleanse can help you lose up to 25 pounds in 10 days. Now, that sounds, man, that's, you know what? That sounds better than a boxer trying to make weight. You know what I'm saying? Summertime is almost over. We're in August. It's Leo season. But we still got time to get in those bikinis and those bathing suits. So you need to drop some pounds. You need to rush over to drjuicecleanse.com. Find out more about the product. But they can help you lose weight. They can help get rid of that little, you know, help get rid of that little gut that you might not want, you know, that's been you've been walking around with for the whole past eight months. Well, Dr. Juice Cleanse in just 10 days can help you get rid of it by just following their very, very simple steps. It takes a lot of discipline, but you can do it. So please visit drjuicecleanse.com today. Let them know Vic XL and the Ryan Dirty Show sent you and receive a nice discount and become a drinker of Dr. Juice Cleanse today. All right, today is Thursday, August the 2nd. And like I said, it's Leo season. And I got to say happy birthday. I got some people I definitely got to wish happy birthday to. Start the whole thing off. I got to say rest in peace. And happy birthday to one of my favorite, one of my favorite cats who was definitely doing that thing on the independent scene out of Atlanta. I got to say happy birthday to Bankroll Fresh. Um, Bankroll Fresh will be 31 years old today. Um, definitely happy birthday. Um, let's keep his memory alive by checking out some of his music, checking out his, um, he did, did an independent film. Let's check that out. But once again, happy birthday to my man Bankroll Fresh. He will be 31 years old today. Also got to say happy birthday to the cousin of Buster Rhymes, Mr. Rampage of the Mighty Mighty Flip Mode Squad. My man Rampage turns 44 years old today. Happy birthday, Rampage. Also got to say happy birthday to Miss Beauty, a.k.a. I'm going to say this right. Miss Beauty, a.k.a. Baji Rodriguez of the, OM, of the now the funk group OMG Girls, but you can still check her out. She's still doing her musical thing. Her name is... Baja Rodriguez, all right? She was formerly of the OMG girl. She was the one who did the raps. But she turns 22 years old today, man. Man, time flies. Also got to say happy birthday to WNBA great 
Miss Skylar Diggins. She turns 28 years old today. Got to say happy birthday to NFL wide receiver, my man Golden Tate of the Detroit Lions. He turns 30 years old today. And got to say happy birthday to MMA fighter, MMA fighter Nick Diaz. He turns 35 years old today. And if you remember Nick Diaz, he actually um defeated my man Conan McGregor. So, and then Conan came back and beat him. And hopefully we'll get a third fight from them real soon. But Nick Diaz turns 35 years old today. All right, I'm flipping over, checking out my Facebook friends and family. Man, I got to say happy birthday to one of the dopest MCs, one of the dopest producers, one of the dopest DJs in the city of the ATL. Got to say happy birthday to my man, DJ Brad, DJ Bradshaw. Definitely got to say happy birthday to him. Uh, man, my man Brad has been doing his thing forever. But happy birthday, Brad. Hopefully you're doing your thing, having a great day. Hopefully, you know, you laid back somewhere making some very, very dope tracks. I also got to say happy birthday to my man. I'm like, say he's like a, he's like a West Coast Renaissance man. He writes books. He does music. Um, happy birthday to my man, Gotti Truth. One loyal, loyal listener to the Ryan Dirty Show. Been rocking with me for over 15 years. But definitely happy birthday to my man, Gotti Truth. And last but not least... I got to say happy birthday to a friend of mine, a brother, a cat I met a couple years ago, but he's definitely doing his thing. He's the only mime I know. He raps. He, 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 he entertains the crowd. He has a great heart. He's an awesome father. I got to say happy birthday to my man, Mr. Dwayne Terry, a.k.a. One Purpose Mime. And if y'all ever need a mime to come to your charity event and do a show, definitely hit my man Dwayne Terry up. One Purpose Mime, definitely, definitely doing his thing. All right. Now, if you know any of the people I wish happy birthday to on my happy birthday list, um, if you follow them on social media, definitely, definitely wish them happy birthday. Let them know Big XL and the Ryan Dirty Show sent you. If you don't follow them, hey, now's a good time. That would be a great birthday gesture by following them. Or even better, birthday gesture would be checking out some of their music, maybe purchasing a single or something. So, you know, hey, man. Definitely, definitely got to say happy birthday to everybody born today on August the 2nd. All right, I don't have a lot of hip-hop news, but I'm going to give you what I got. First of all, quick reminder. You know, I like to remind you guys of events. It's going down October the 6th through 7th, A3C Festival, one of the biggest hip-hop festivals in the U.S., comes to Atlanta. Again, that's October the 6th and 7th, going down right here in Atlanta. So far confirmed to perform, Wu-Tang Clan, Lil Wayne, the Dip Set, Diplomats, my man J.I.D. from J. Cole's Camp Currency, Young and May, Manny Fresh, and man, Buku's and Buku's of other people will be performing at the A3C Festival. If you are an artist, please, please try to get there. Try to get there quick. All right, man, it seems like Lauren Hill, she's never in the news for anything good, it appears. She is suing her cousin for an unpaid loan. Now, I don't know how y'all feel about that because I'm not really big into loaning money. But, uh, man, would you sue a family member if you loaned them money and they weren't able to pay you back? Would you Would you sue them? Or would you just charge you the game? You know, because Lauren Hill, well, I don't know if Lauren Hill got lots and lots of money because Lauren Hill did do jail for tax evasion. And um, I don't know. But Lauren Hill's like, you know what? Hell no, nah, fuck that. My cousin got to give me my money. And she is suing. So Lauren Hill, I guess, you know, good luck on recovering your change. Um, my man Lil Uzi Vert, you know, I say this a lot of times. I don't know what's the deal with a lot of the young rappers. I definitely try to listen to their music. Um I I I I definitely give them a chance. I don't try to use I don't like using the term mumble rap. Um I just know they're a younger generation, they do things different. But my man Lil Uzi Vert has a brand new album coming out called Eternal A Take. And when you get a chance, please, please, please. Check out the album cover because it definitely looks like a spin or some art inspired by a um, suicidal cult. Um, when you get a chance, man, so, you know, Lil Uzi Vert done a show, so I'm taking you out of hell with me. I don't know what's going on with Lil Uzi Vert, but bro, you are not Marilyn Manson. You are not Marilyn Manson. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave Lil Uzi Vert alone. I don't really care if you don't cry. Yeah, you, Lil Uzi. I don't care. But. Stop confusing the kids. That's all I'm going to say, Uzi. Stop confusing the kids. Let them know that 
amazing things to live for. Last but not least in hip-hop news, man, my man, Art Kelly's manager, you know, two weeks ago, Art Kelly came out with a 19-minute song called I Admit. Well, now his manager is wanted by the police for threatening a woman's father. Or please keep your name out the damn news. That's all we need. Just a little less talk about R. Kelly. Some positive talk, if at all possible. All right. That's it. Gave y'all hip-hop news. Gave y'all birthdays and our sponsor. Now it's time for me to give y'all what I enjoy giving y'all most, and that's that new new. When I do this show, it's like opening that brand new box of Jordans because I always got somebody exciting on the line who's cultivating and doing their thing when it comes to the community. And today is no different than any other day. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Get your ass close to your computer screen, your computer speaker, your radio speaker, however you're checking out the show. And welcome to the Ryan Dirty Show, Mr. Chulo. What's going on, my guy? Hey, thank you for uh, inviting me and being so hospitable, Vic. I, man, you know what? I, I do what I can. Um, you know what? And, I, and I'm going to say this first. Welcome to the show. Secondly, um... October will be my, my um, second wedding anniversary, and my wife is Hispanic. And when I met her six years ago, it made me really, really dive deep into the um, Latino culture and listen to more Latino music, Latin trap. Um, I just tried to really, really understand and, and dig it. And I got to say that um, I've become very, very fond of the Latin sound. Well, it's good. It's good to open up. Now, let's start this thing off the proper way by you introducing yourself to the good people and letting them know where you're from. Okay. I uh, was raised in San Diego, California, so the West Coast, the most southern biggest city in California next to the Mexican border. And uh, But my background is uh, Puerto Rican, which had some uh, difficulties growing up because there aren't Puerto Ricans in California. And I always asked my, my mom, why didn't we live in Florida or New York? And she said, we don't like the rain and we don't like the snow. Um, but yeah, California is awesome. That's where I grew up, Southern California. All right, so what was it like growing up and being Puerto Rican growing up in, in California? Because I definitely understand the Puerto Rican community, the, the majority is not in Cali. Um, what were your challenges growing up, if any? Yeah, it wasn't too many. I mean, when you're a kid, uh, it's changing a little now, but it, when I grew up, no one, unless you're taught, no one really cares what race you are, how tall you are. I mean, there's bullies, but it's not very, it's not, it's not very prevalent. It's not very big. And uh, so when I grew up, it wasn't very difficult until high school. And that's uh, when I felt a little alienated because I wasn't Mexican. I'm surrounded by tons of Mexicans. I don't really know their culture other than uh, that the, the ladies liked me. And that was reciprocated, and I liked their food, but I didn't really know much about them. So um, there was some animosity there, some tension. And then um, I played basketball growing up, so I had black friends, but that's where it really, that culture wasn't, I, I'm not black, so I didn't really uh, fit in with them outside of the basketball court. And then, so there was, there was challenges, uh, but other than that, it was, it was a good, good, healthy um, youth for me. All right. Uh, when did you decide that you wanted to do music and what made you want to do music? Very good question. Thanks for asking. Uh, I never was really interested in doing music. I liked listening to music, uh, specifically Michael Jackson um, and pop. But I met uh, who is now my best friend one day at church. And he uh, extended the invitation to get to know him. He was a recording engineer for some uh, famous people in Chicago. Uh, anyone, whether it was an orchestra, a rock band, a rapper, an R&B singer, who would come to his studio. He would engineer and record the vocals and then mix and master. Well, he gave that up, move up, moved to San Diego. I met him, and I lit a fire under him to get doing that again. Uh, once I got interested in doing music, but I wasn't interested in music until he said that he had the talent. So really, it was an opportunity that presented itself, and I just wanted to use the resource. After uh, doing a, a few terrible songs, um, poems translated into song, uh, 
I improved a little bit and uh, have made uh, some successful songs. But really, this is just recent. I just started doing music two months ago. Okay. Um, let's go back to your love for basketball. Just like you said. No, go ahead. Yeah, just like you said, like opening a box of opening a box of uh, new Jordans. It's literally what you're doing. You're exposing me. So thank you, because I'm really nothing. I'm not, I'm a nobody right now. It's all good. Everybody's somebody here on the Ryan Dirty Show. And I like to, to talk to people. And whether it's a year later, five years later, when I see them accepting those awards, I look at my wife and I'm like, baby, remember when I interviewed them? Or remember when I had them on the show? So, you know, for the past 15 plus years, I've been behind this mic exposing what I like to say, some of the industry's greatest artists. And it's not just even rappers. I've talked to dancers, actors, singers, just people who are trying to affect their community in a positive way. And I definitely see you doing that. So um, your love for basketball. Um, how good were you at basketball? How good was I or am I? Oh, oh, my, oh my bad, Chulo. How good are you? I still play. I still, <laughs> I still play. Um, how good? That's subjective. Uh, I'm only five foot six, but my coach told me I was the first player he had ever coached in 20 something years that couldn't touch the net, couldn't palm the ball, and couldn't spin the ball on his finger. But uh, I said, good thing those things don't matter in a game. Um, I mean, I don't have hops, but let me, uh, I'm shifty. I, I cross you up. So, but I'm okay. I'm okay. So, how often do you get a chance to get on that court? Every day. I play every day. Right, do, uh, Monday through Friday. All right. Do you play any leagues or you just um, play, you know, in the gym for rec? Or, or what are your plans when it comes to the court? You know, they got, hey, you know, Ice Cube started the big three league out in California. And once a year they have a draft. Yeah, but that's for, that's, yeah that, that's a, that's a, uh, I'm not that ambitious. I'm not that ambitious. And I understand my limitations due to my physique. But, uh. I think, uh, I mean, it's fun to watch on YouTube the, the highlights of my former, because those are former NBA players, and some of those are were my favorite players, like Iverson played last year. Um, I watched him. It was fun. But as far as, uh, yeah, I play in rec leagues. I'll play even in college intramural leagues. Um, and I'll play church ball where no blood, no foul. So, yeah, I still play in the streets. I was playing in Venice Beach a month ago. So it was fun. So, look. On the news here in Atlanta, this is off the subject, just because we're talking about basketball. On the news in Atlanta. It's so good, I love it. On the news in Atlanta last week at a, um, a LA Fitness, a Caucasian gentleman was fired by an African American gentleman. The Caucasian gentleman called the police. The yes, did you hear about that? Yeah, I saw that. I read it, yep. What would I you. I read it. That's, uh, hey. What would you do? What would you do if someone called the cops on you after a foul? Uh, I must have fouled them. Must have been a legitimate foul, the one that he he won't forget, because I think it's a little extreme. I, I think there's more to the story. I mean, he must have threatened them or something. You don't call the cops for. I mean, unless it was a gamble, they're wagering money. There's no reason to. It's just a game, and you lost the game. Go sit and wait to the next game and get back on. There's no reason to get cops involved. That was embarrassing, quite frankly. The funny thing, they talked to a lot of onlookers, and the onlookers said after the cops came, questioned the gentleman, they resumed the game and both finished the game. Ain't that crazy? Yeah, I guess they, uh, they needed to prove a point. Or sometimes people's egos are bigger than their brains. You know this. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, who are some of your influences when it comes to making music? Like, who inspires you to do what you do behind that microphone? Yeah, three people. Uh, myself, because I've learned that in the end, uh, you'll have friends that come and go. You have uh, people that motivate you, or your motivations might change. But in the end, you have yourself. And if you believe in yourself and you whatever measurement you use, if you see some level of success, uh, you, it's a, that's a great factor to continue on. So I'm, I'm my own um, influence. Another one is God, because in the Bible he says that you should pursue your talents. And then 
the third one would have to be Ja Rule. He was a, a rapper in the early 2000s, and he two or three years. And now that's not very long. But back then, rappers didn't last longer than two or three years. But he was number one among, and you know, you'll remember this: Jay Z, Eminem, Nas, so many people, Mystical, Ludacris, Fabulous, Ti, Lil Jon, all these people. And he was number one. And the reason he's a motivator for me is because he didn't do what everyone else was doing. He still produced those hits over and over. Him and his uh I mean, and so I thought, <laughs> well, you're for like many rap or this trap music. There's a fan base out there that will like my sound. There's a fan base that will like my style. I just need to find them. Man, you know what? The one thing that was super dope about Ja Rule that a lot of people overlooked, Ja Rule was smart. Ja Rule made music that targeted the ladies. And the ladies still, yep. still are the most dominant buyers when it comes to urban and Latino music. So no matter what you do, how hard you are, it's just like Drake said, these fellas going to buy it to say they're buying it for their ladies. Or the ladies just gonna go buy it anyway. So That's what I'm saying. if you're making music That's that the saying. ladies love, then you are definitely in it. We agree. All right. Why did you pick the name? Because I know, you know what, I'm gonna let you give the people a Spanish lesson. Let them know what the word chulo means and why did you pick that name for yourself? Yeah, uh ultimately I'm I'm not I'm not, I'm early. I'm nothing famous, I'm nothing established, uh, but picking a name is difficult because so many names have already been taken and uh, I don't want to bite people's uh, style. But anyway, in my youth, middle school, high school, la mujer, or the, the, the girls would uh, call me that. Hey, you're chulo or get chulo or like your style or like your face or whatever. Uh, and so I thought I was cute. And I thought, well, I can't call myself cute in English, that doesn't sound cool. But in Spanish, it works, especially since the music I do is uh, catered to... Um, I do hip-hop in English, and I'll do rap, and I'll do uh, Chicano rap, and I'll do reggaeton, and I have a pop song coming, and I have a my first reggae coming song coming, and I have a kizomba song, kizombu song coming. Um, but uh, I thought that that name would, would be international and recognized so that someone would automatically assume, okay, he's probably Latino. Um, let's see what he sounds like. That's definitely what's up. Um, in doing music over the past couple of months, um, as an independent artist, and this, yeah, is, no. this is a very, very hard game, um, what has been some of the struggles over the past couple of months for you? Um, uh, do I have to answer this? I don't want to sound like a, a whiner, Vic. No, be truthful. Okay, I can answer it. Um, yeah, it's it's been very difficult for three reasons. Because I already have uh, minimal patience, and that's the something I need to conquer that attribute, and it's been taking me my whole life. And so, when I'm impatient, and with music, you need to get exposure, regardless of where it is on earth, and 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 it's, it's been trying my patience. But other than patience, the biggest struggle has been other people taking me seriously. I've had, uh, ever since beginning my Instagram, and I know I'm years behind everyone else, uh, but ever since that, I, I received messages from models making fun of me um, when I sent invitations for one to be in a music video. I've had other rappers say I'm terrible, and I think if I'm terrible, what, what was necessary for you to tell me? Uh, I've had other uh, people uh, not come through. Uh, I'll buy a, a service of them. The transaction should be, I pay you and you provide this, and they just won't do it, um, or they'll do it late because I'm not a priority. And I know I'm not number one, but I think if you want to have a good, faithful client, why don't you take me seriously and don't? And so that's been my biggest struggle is uh, other people helping me progress in this music industry. But in the end, it's fine because it's all part of the process, Vic. Listen, I definitely understand and know, and I and I hate to say it 
because I've been in the music business. I've managed. Um, I've, I've I've done a decent amount over the past twenty years. And the and the one thing, and I really like artists to be honest about it. The one thing that you know, because I consider myself a support system for people, but the one thing that I think is horrible are the vultures in this game. And when I say vultures, I'm talking about the people who uh, know that people are trying to achieve their dream and they swoop down, um, whether it's promising to do a service and not, whether char overcharging an artist. I just, I hate the people that take advantage of artists' dreams because some of us, that's all we have are our dreams. Yep. Dream and effort and then results. And I'm somebody that believes in getting results. So no excuses, just get the result. And if it doesn't happen, then one of two things caused it. A lack of uh, trying your best or bad timing. And, and you know, you know, you know, the one thing that's, that's really cool about music, um, music is like school and it's so educational. And there's so many ways to have a career in the music. A lot of people think, well, if I'm not on the radio, I'm not popping. But, you know, a lot of people overlook getting their songs in movies. A lot of people overlook getting their yeah. songs on television. A lot of people overlook the gaming industry. Yeah. So there are so many ways Back. as an artist to achieve um, residual income. Because to me, it should be more about trying to provide a better way for yourself and your family. And that comes through income. And um, as long as, I'm going to tell you, as long as you're consistent, number one, if someone says anything negative about you, they don't like your music or they don't like how you look, the first thing you got to ask is, why did they give me three minutes of their life to listen to my song? Or why did they give me one minute of their life to go on my page? So to me, negative feedback, if you look at it like I was given an opportunity and some time and turn it to a positive, it's not negative because they gave you time. Because let me tell you, all the artists I don't like, I don't know that I don't like them because I don't listen to them. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It does. So you, you said that you've had some models turn you down because I've been on your Instagram page. Number one, I have a Lincoln. Oh, yeah, but I have a Lincoln, and I love Lincolns. I call it my Stankin' Lincoln. But I noticed you have a Lincoln Continental. Nice. And inside your Lincoln Continental, you have a beautiful lady. So everybody hasn't turned you down. You're right. Not everybody. That's exactly my point, Vic, is that in the end, maybe I never become Drake, who gets a billion streams in a week, uh, which is nuts to me because of all the famous songs ever done, his is the one that people are streaming the most, and, and there's so many songs that, in my opinion, are better. But this is my point. All you need to find out of seven or eight billion people on, in the globe is a hundred thousand loyal. That's it. You just need to, and, and, and even preferably if they're within a region where you can travel, um, then then you know you're gonna be successful. Ninety seconds. Multiple shows uh, very frequently because you'll have. 2,000 people per show, 5,000, 500 that will come and support you. Uh, so it, it's not even necessary you have 50 million followers or or uh, subscribers or whatever. Uh, you just need to find your the group that are going to be loyal to you, and that's what I'm trying to do. Well, you're definitely on the right path. Uh, we only have like a couple minutes left, so I got to ask a couple quick questions. Okay. Like, uh, number one, what's next? <laughs> what's next for Chulo? Yeah, so because I just started out, the next thing is uh, building my Instagram followers, YouTube subscribers, promoting myself via Spotify and iTunes, which is still, um, and that's another thing it's taken forever because uh, it doesn't matter, no excuses, uh, and um, putting out more, more music videos and more songs. And like I just mentioned, I am not limiting myself to one genre. I'm reaching out to different artists in different genres and asking them, hey, do you want to collaborate and have a rap feature? I'll be the feature and you guys do your thing. Um, some of them are no-namers like me that have um, ambitious goals and aspirations and other ones Ten have seconds. been to 100,000 followers already that have been very kind in letting me collaborate with them. So those will come in the subsequent months. 
So I'm excited. All right. Well, definitely, my guy, continue to beat the pavement. Um, before I get you to introduce this record, I want you to let the people know how to find you, what are all your links, whether it's social media or website. Yep, youtube.com forward slash Trula Rapper, Facebook, same thing, Instagram, same thing, Twitter, same thing, Spotify soon, it should have been last Friday, hopefully it'll be tomorrow, if not, very soon, iTunes, same thing, Trula Rapper, those will be coming up as soon as uh, I get the appropriate artwork to uh, supplement my songs, so, yep, Trula Rapper, Trula Rapper. All right, now, we have this record. Me Chulo. Introduce it to the people, and um, I definitely appreciate you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. The song is a, a song by many artists who have given their opinion or dedication to the opposite gender. And so I thought I could do the same thing, maybe a little bit better. And this song is a uh, essentially my girlfriend or my wife and my love for her and so this is me chula thank you sir keep beating that no pavement worries. keep beating that pavement and keep riding dirty yeah thank you and i'll talk to you all right Be measured. 
R-A-D-I-O. Also visit RyanDirtyRadio.com and uh, we'll be back tomorrow, man. I got another exciting guest, man. It's a busy week. Um, definitely, definitely keep, thank y'all for keeping me busy. I'm going to keep the interviews coming. Alright, your boy BKTL, man. We gone. We out. Peace. Y'all enjoy your day. Alright? Alright.